Okay, let's admit it. It's not very cool to believe in God these days. Not very woke. Doesn't make for great TikTok videos. You won't see God stenciled on the back of an NFL player's football helmet. Woke's gone mainstream and God is now the counterculture. Yes. Wow, cool. I'm a hippie. <laughs> Who knew? Eh. And the Bible, well, that's even a bigger challenge. We, uh, you know, we have science, not silly stories and superstitions. God is not happening. It's so 1950s. We moved on. We have YouTube, Google. Alexa is our God now. The collective consciousness of the very best Silicon Valley programmers. <sighs> Who needs God? I mean, you got that, right? I mean, why read and uncover the mysteries of the Bible when Siri can provide all the answers to everything? You don't need God when you want to know how to make guacamole, do you? But Siri will tell you, right? Sure. Google will tell you who won the Masters in 1972. But who, but who do you ask to give you strength and wisdom to become a master? As smart as Alexa and Google seemingly are, they don't give a shit about you. Nope. Sure, you wake to, hi, Scott, good morning. Here's today's headlines, usually followed by the weather, which right there proves that it doesn't give a shit about me because I live in Buffalo and I don't need to start my day knowing that we're getting three feet of snow in three hours. God would never tell me the weather in Buffalo each morning is a happy greeting because Alexa and Google and Siri don't, well, here we go again, give a shit about you. <laughs> and it's not just AI, it's people too. You meet them all the time. And that's why we read the Bible. Because being actually genuinely decent requires teaching. Yes, from someone that really does care about us. God! And sure, it takes some faith to believe that there's a creator to this unimaginable universe and all the living things that reside in it, including us. But you should, you should try it. I mean, give it a shot one day, like, like now. So let's get on with it. All right. Hey, we are here with lots of lovely guests. And let's start. She wears many hats in comedy, actress, comedian, writer, producer. But in reality, she doesn't own a hat. Nicole Amy Schreiber is in the house or something like that. Hey, how are you, Nicole? I'm okay. <laughs> how are you? I'm, I'm I can't believe you're uh, obviously in not. Yes, uh, I, I ran away from L.A., but I will be back. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> he may be an actor and comedian, but when he reads the Bible, he becomes more of a like an assistant director. Welcome, Kevin Farley. Hey, how are you? <laughs> All assistant right. director, I like that. Yeah. All <laughs> right. He's never seen a mic that he didn't want to grab, and now he has his own to grab. That didn't come out right. Welcome, comedian, podcaster, and my co-host, Mr. Sandy Danto. I just had my mic in my mouth that I was desperate to grab. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> She's petted more animals that panicky service dogs request her to be their service human. Welcome, actress, thinker, my sidekick, Jackie Venney. Hey. I've never been referred to as that, but what a lovely thing to think yes, of me as. You're a service human. You're a service human, yes. And, but for uh, the animal. Yes. Oh, for the animals. Yes, for the animals. <laughs> hey, we are flirting with the tail end of Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve's brood. In Genesis chapter 4, Cain gets jealous, takes out his brother. It's a horrible thing. God's upset and sends Cain into exile in the land. But he marks Cain, which protects him from being murdered. All right. This is Genesis chapter 4, verse 17, as we continue from last week. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he was building a city, and he called the city after the name of his son Enoch. All right, this has got to be like a tell of something, especially because in the first verse of this chapter, when it's Adam and Eve, and it says, now the man knew his wife. Really, the man knew his wife. I'm not taking the bait. We continue. And she conceived and bore Cain. 
And now 17 verses later, Cain's wife is conceiving a child, Enoch, and Cain's not mentioned in the process, just like Adam's not in verse one. My God, is anyone having sex in this family? <sighs> Maybe God, you know, is so suspect about early man's offspring that he really feels better, you know, taking it from here. Well, let's take this to the panel, shall we? All right, who do we go to first? We're gonna go to Nicole first. Now, why is there seemingly emphasis on this conceiving a child without a dude? What's going on here? I think there was intercourse, okay? Because some guy isn't, not, isn't going to build a city and then name his son after a city if that's not his actual son. Not Would you bad. give a whole city to a son that's not your son? What else did you have to do besides bone and build a city? <laughs> That's my improv team, by the way. Bone and build a city. <laughs> bone and build a city. Well, I, I think, I, yeah, I, look, you could be right. Sandy, wasn't there a point where, like, man didn't really even know how to use his equipment? I mean, like, he wouldn't even know what to do. That's something maybe guys tell themselves. They're like, you know what? None of those... uh None of those biblical figures, they didn't know how to use their equipment, so it's totally okay if I don't know how to use mine either. I do, I, I, you know, it isn't, it, this, is the, this is the Bible, this is the Torah. This isn't penthouse form. It's not gonna have an illicit carnal affair written out in detail, you know? I think just because it's it says It's not gonna be that, written out in Aramaic. Right, exactly. <laughs> It, it, that would be a tough translation anyway. Kevin, yeah. do, you buy what Nicole, do you buy what I'm saying and Nicole? Did, did, did God, did she conceive the child with God or was Cain involved? What's your take on this? I think Cain was involved. I think uh, uh, Adam raised the Cain and then Cain raised this guy. Uh, Enoch. It's a kind of a crazy name. I think that Cain must have been very angry when he named him Enoch. It sounds uh, <laughs> it sounds like he's he's gonna get teased at school, you know. And you, you know you can't Enoch it, right? <laughs> <laughs> can't Enoch it. Can't Enoch it. Enoch. Can't Enoch it. Uh, it's a crazy name for a kid. And it's a crazy name for a city. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie, <laughs> what's your take on it? I mean, I think, of course, they got busy. I think what it's saying is the man's role is so small in giving her the baby that they're just focusing on it being the woman's in this particular passage of the Bible, if that makes sense. Because all he did was, you know, however long that took a minute, I don't know. Um, if he did what? that, she was and then the woman did nine months and did, and everything. So I think in this passage, the Bible is or it's saying, this is the woman's, and the man really didn't do much. Couldn't agree with Jackie more. Couldn't agree <laughs> with Jackie more. Men are men are such a minimal part of the equation. A lot of guys think they're 50% of it. And to those men, I say, you're bad at math. Are you kidding? You showed up to a cookie making <laughs> party with a stick of butter. And then we have the rest of the ingredients and the oven to bake the cookies. Relax with your condiment. It's melting, okay? Well, when we come back, we'll see if we could uh, unravel the, uh, the later parts of the Cain and Abel saga here. Okay, we're back, hopefully finishing up Genesis chapter four, verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, she conceived and bore Enoch, and he was building a city. And he called the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Wow, so the first thing that humans do after like tilling the soil and wandering around and having a kid is to build a city. Not a crib, that would be nice. But as Einstein once said, God doesn't play dice with the universe. This isn't an accident that Cain 
does this first in the Bible. Apparently, God wants us to have cities. Not sure what a city gives us, except traffic, crime, and a lot of crappy diners named Tom's. But then again, the alternative isn't so great. Living isolated, away from others in flyover country, obsessed with the soy crop, that's not so great as well. But I guess that could be the point here. God doesn't want us to be isolated from each other, at least for too long. He wants us to congregate, to exchange ideas, form groups, put up signs, tear down signs, get in fights, bash it out, live on top of each other, on the bottom of each other. Maybe he's right. We need cities as much as us so enlightened people think we don't. This spring and summer, you couldn't get me out of the garden. I was floating away there, flowers, oh, by the end of the summer, in a glorious yard. But then the fall came and it all just died on me. And then I realized <laughs> I didn't really accomplish anything tangible, like moving my life forward in any substantial way. I barely had a conversation with anybody. It was great, but it was also like missing something, like other people. God wants us to have cities because perhaps he's concerned that we might get a little too enamored with his creations. When we find ourselves marveling at the foliage way beyond peak. <laughs> you know, Sandy, I'm going to you first. You could stare at a sunset for only so long and eventually your maculas will be destroyed and the lights go out. Sandy, why do we need cities? You need the cities so people can mix and mix ideas and, and have their strong feelings and thoughts challenged and, and see different perspectives and and share art and ideas and music and you know the things that god knew we needed to do you know god gets it nicole why does god think we need cities so badly i mean as a jew allergy season's pretty rough in montana you know i gotta get out i gotta get out of the uh, uh, grass me and grass we're we're not a thing. You want to picnic with me? How much Claritin do you have? I got to I cannot be in a rural area. It's just not an option. I am a city dweller. I need to congregate with my people. Also, I need something to complain about. As I and I feel like a lot of people are like that. If you're just living in nature, you're going to be happy all the time. That's where's the comedy coming from? Where's the struggle? Oh, you need to build a fire. Go get a rock and some some I don't know sticks. But it's just like when you're in the city. Ah, the mwah, it's the nectar of life. There's so much to bitch about. That's what I'm so God basically <laughs> wants us to complain in some way, but not yes, too much. Absolutely. Yeah. We're absolutely. not complaining, we're not living. At least maybe Jews. Listen, you if know. you're not if you're not analyzing every single thing and having an opinion about every single thing, are you even a Jew? Are you even human? First of all, <laughs> that's why Jews are I mean, we need comedians. Comedians aren't coming from a happy upbringing in the woods. Now Kevin Farley <laughs> Johnny Carson yeah. came from Nebraska. How do you explain that? Right. <laughs> I can't. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I've been to Nebraska. Uh, no, my guess is uh, Johnny developed his humor because Nebraska, you probably had to come up with your own entertainment because uh, there's not a lot going on over there. But I do think that uh, God likes cities. I think naturally we are formed. I think we form cities naturally. Um, and I think that uh, is pleasing because I do think there's an, a, a real uh, niceness when people can get together and, and just be around each other. <laughs> Jackie. I recently moved from L.A. to Tahoe and a smaller part of Tahoe where there's not a lot of people. And I was living in LA for five years and I definitely see the positives and negatives of both, but something that I was really longing for and I'm in LA right now is the um, cultivation of creativity when you're with a group of people. And that type of growth can only happen when you're with different people 
because you're able to bounce off different ideas with each other. Someone's good at building something. Someone is good at figuring out the architecture, the math for it. And that's the only, I think when you're with a lot of people, that is the only time where true growth can happen is when we have different minds coming together. And I think that's why this current time we're in has been such a pinnacle point of growth in human evolution because we are able to connect with more people in a shorter time because we have more technology that can talk to people in China and get minds in India about this particular topic. So we have just more minds on one problem gives so much growth. And I think that's why we have cities and that's why we cult we come together as humans is for the gro growth of creativity and to see a different perspective. Well, so I guess you would prefer frolicking in cities than frolicking you know, like in a few no, days. No, I like both. I need both. I've been in LA for like a month and a half and I'm about to go back to being a, a fairy tree, a tree fairy. And I'm really, really, really excited to be a tree fairy. And now <laughs> we go to the break and we come back and we'll finish this up. Genesis chapter 4, verse 18 to verse 22. And it's time now. We finally have reached it. The begots part of the Bible. Exciting, thrilling. Verse 18. And Erod. Oh, I'm going to blow all these names, so please forgive me, God, or anybody watching. It's going to be bad. And Erod was born to Enoch. And, and Erod begot Mahujalal and Mahajal begot Methushal, and Methushal begot Lemek. Verse 19, and Lemek took himself two wives. Wow, took, by the way, notice took. And one was named Ada, and the other was named Zilla. Well, here's the wives thing again at last week's stuff, but now here's Lemek taking a wife, not knowing his wife, not knowing his wife, but taking a wife. Pretty different, I guess. Man has discovered quite possibly sex, although the panel would disagree with me. They think he's been busy the whole time. Verse 20, now Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have cattle. And verse 21, and his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all who grasp a lyre and a flute. And verse 22, and Zillah, she too bore Tubal Cain, who sharpened all tools that cut copper and iron. And Tubal Cain's sister was Naamah. This strikes me very much like in the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. Now, this is gonna sound crazy, but like, you know, this is what the stuff is. Remember, the first part, when the apes are wild, chaotic, until one of them dares touch the monolith. At that point, there appears to be some transference of knowledge. It seems to me as if that's what's going on here, that these descendants of Adam and Eve's Cain have been imparted some specific knowledge, wisdom, that possibly God feels is needed in order to kickstart human civilization. Nicole, I go to you. Could it be that we would still be stuck outside, wildly living under a rock, unshaven, unshowered, if perhaps God didn't impart man with certain knowledge that he thought was necessary for humanity to blossom, perhaps? This whole passage, by the way, I mean, it's a lot of he did, he did, had, he had, she had, they had. There's so much... I can't believe how much sex goes on. Everybody's... First of all, everybody's taking women. Um, very aggressive. I mean, I can't believe the Me Too movement didn't start sooner. Um, everybody's just taking women, having children, um, uh, ta taking multiple wives. I didn't, first of all, I forgot that there's multiple wives. Um, I can't believe we even advanced as a civilization the way things were going. It sounds like people were doing a lot more, oops, sorry, a lot more, you know, stuffing than, um, than, than building of a city. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, um, Sandy, you, you, you begot a couple of, couple of kids and, uh, I don't know if you named them, uh, what do you think of those names, Sandy? Those are not the biblical names that caught on, not a Rachel <laughs> or a Sarah or an Isaac in the lot. More people <laughs> name their kids after the third tier Game of Thrones characters than those biblical names. Uh, Jackie. I, uh, I mean, yeah, I think it was probably necessary for God to be like, so I'm trying to make like a big herd on this planet. And there's like one, two, three, four, five of you. I need y'all to get busy. Like now I'm going to come back in a couple of days couple years i want this to have multiplied so i'm pretty sure that the whole sexy thing was very much so encouraged maybe god included the musical instruments in this passage because enjoying art is an aphrodisiac Ooh, maybe there you go so loosen them up you guys God is a horny dude. God is a horny dude. He created us in his image. We're all horny people because of him. On Saturday, it's considered a mitzvah on the Sabbath to have sex with your significant other. It's I think right there. you're on to we're just something. We're meant to be horny. This should just be titled the sex chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they call it getting I busy and messing around. God says, get busy. And then he said, and then he say, okay, and then doing what? He, you know, messing around. Well, which one? Messing around or, or getting busy? I don't know. It doesn't seem, they seem like two opposite things. I don't know. It's a Quit dumb messing joke. around. No, no. Get busy. <laughs> get busy. I think, I think but he I, wants uh, you to get busy messing, making a mess. I think get m messing around. Sex is supposed to be messy. This is God encouraging right. you to have Kinky, messy sex. Kinky yeah. and messy sex. Well, thank you guys for coming on. And that's it for tonight. And, uh, well, uh, we'll continue with Cain and Abel and uh, Genesis next week.